Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C A G F L Y dot com. This episode of Frame Rate is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high quality website or blog. For a free 14 day trial, go to Squarespace.com slash frame rate and be sure to check out their annual plans for savings of up to 20% off. Welcome to Frame Rate Episode 21. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Brian Brushwood. And I'm in love with Tom Merritt's awesome, awesome <laughs> improv. That is the best song I've heard all day, sir. Those are, those are the new lyrics. You, you, I forgot to send those over to you. I apologize. Uh, and that includes the Pop-Tart Cat song that we opened the show with, that, uh, that homegrown rocking out that people do. Man, don't you wish you had talent? When I see people rocking on a guitar like that, I was just like, I wish I had talent and didn't just flap my gums a bunch. For I know. I was watching that. I'm like, this isn't funny. This is depressing. That's good. I can't even pick up a guitar. You've held up a mirror to my soul, sir, and That's I don't right. appreciate it. So uh, we have got a lot of stories. We should just dig right in and plow through it because there is a lot going on this week. Oh, that's when you know it's big because it's time to talk about the big story. This just in, the big story. Our uh, big story this week comes from Bamboom. Is that the name of this? <laughs> yes, Bamboom is the Dear name. Story. Okay. Dear story. Wow. This is this is this is ballsy. Uh, this is a uh, company out in New York that is delivering television to you over the internet without getting a license. Sounds dangerous, right? But what they're doing well, might they work. I mean, it's not so dangerous for folks like, you know, like Slingbox, because it's hardware. It's taking your signal. There's only one receiver. Exactly. And it's not so dangerous for cable vision, right? Because they're a cable company, and they won that case where they are allowed to have the DVR housed at the cable vision office, and you control it remotely over the Internet. Well, okay. that's, that's sure. what, I mean, it's not over the open Internet, but still, same idea. That's what's going on here uh, with Chet Kenogia and Bamboom, they have created a special antenna that's about the size of a dime that receives over-the-air broadcasts. They are providing a separate antenna for every single subscriber, and then that antenna feeds into a tuner and a DVR that is at their location. And I have a, I have a feeling that DVR is like a virtualized DVR on a server, so they can pack in a bunch of those as well. And then... You pay them a little money, they give you access to over-the-air broadcasts that they don't have to go out and license. So these are things that you could put up an antenna on top of your house, theoretically, and get anyway, uh, but you can get them now over the Internet. And in addition to this, they actually block you 
from watching any of the over-the-air broadcasts when you're outside of the area. So if you're getting Bamboo in New York, which is the only place that's available, when you travel outside to New York, you can still watch your DVR programs, but you can't watch anything live. Well, okay, so here's what's different about this. They're, they're, uh, in the world of things that make sense, it would seem like you should be able to have a service that allows you to stream your local content onto your television using whatever method. Who cares if it comes over the pipes of the Internet or if it comes over the airwaves? What's the difference either way? Uh, I, already, we, I already have that with my Sonos setup. I'm able to select any of my local radio stations, and I don't have to rely on an FM transmitter, that kind of thing. And, uh, and it makes sense. But as we've seen before, there are several decisions that say, no, 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 no. It's not just as good at. There, there is the law, and by the letter of the law, you have to have your own antenna in order to in order to, to, to sign in. And so the fact now I gotta wonder, like I'm gonna I'm gonna give these guys the benefit of the doubt and say that this antenna that they have that is the size of a dime actually really is an antenna and they really do use that antenna and you really do attach your money to that one physical piece of property because maybe it's because I'm a magician scam artist kind of guy. Just seems to me like I would just go to a model shop and buy a bunch of fake antennas and be like, no, these are the antennas. What does it matter? Yeah, it seems like, you know, they, it might have been easier for them to just pay the mechanical royalty that any cable provider pays uh, to be able to just stick up a big antenna on a pole and share that with all their subscribers. That's absolutely legal. But remember, Ivy got in trouble for that. They were doing that. Uh, paying the mechanical royalty and then rebroadcasting over the air to subscribers around the country, but they didn't have the region specificness. So, so what or specificity? What Bam Boom is doing is saying we're really going to show that we're trying hard to stay within the law. That you know, when we if we ever get dragged in front of a judge, which they probably expect to do, we're going to show like, look, we might not have had to do this. We might have been able to skate close to the line, but we didn't. We're, we are providing a service. I, I makes me wonder if somebody could provide a hosted service where they say, look, we'll host a sling box and a cable box for you, and then just you get everything over the Internet. It would be the same sort of idea, just a lot more costly. This isn't as costly because of the antenna situation. Well, I wonder also if it's the kind of thing, I mean, it, it seems like their strict adherence to the letter of the law is so ridiculous that it's almost like they're trying to point out how stupid the, the yeah, letter of law is at this time. They're like, oh, no, you need an antenna? Look, here, it's an antenna. We bought 10,000 of these, so please shut the hell up and get out of our face because you can't get us on that loophole. This is something everybody wants, and here's a gizmo that uh, obeys the letter of the law. So yeah, this, is an, uh, this is a business created entirely by the ridiculousness of today's legal system that a uh, hundred years from now, people are going to look at this and laugh. Like, why would you ever do that? Why wouldn't you just deliver content over the Internet? Why would you need to have an Agreed. antenna? That's just crazy. Agreed. Uh, now, do you, do you think this is kind of a secondary question? Do you think that we are looking at m any kind of massive sweeping changes for sensible legislation on this kind of thing? Or do you think that it's so hard to fix the letter of the law on so many of these stupid issues that we're just going to be stuck with this kind of solution for a long time? I think it's going to be a generational thing. So I don't think it's going to be forever, but I think it might be 20 years uh, maybe, maybe 15, 10 or 15 before we, we make the switch entirely over. It's going to be come in slow dribs and drabs. You're going to have a few companies like, like Virgin Atlantic type companies or, or you know, Virgin, uh, America type companies who are going to say, we're going to go out on the edge and say, customer service is important. And then other companies start to follow them. You're going to have networks taking a leap eventually saying, you know what? We are going to broadcast directly over the internet. We're going to give it a try. So, so you think it's going to take be... generational change at the top of these companies before they all go, look, we grew up with the Internet. This is just the way it works. Let's deal with it. So like, like we had discussed before, so much of what we're seeing in video has already happened in the music industry. It could be that this example is a case of someone trying to pull an mp3.com and down the road we'll have what Amazon is doing. Yeah. Where it's essentially the same thing, but a slight change of verbiage and plus they're an 800-pound gorilla on the Internet that's able to finally push back and say, you know, well, guess what? It's pretty much the same. So it could be that this is the test case that might get smacked down just as many other services you know, have. I, I actually don't think this will get smacked down. I have, I have, really? a, good, I have a good feeling about this. I think they have a very good chance of winning. It, it all depends on whether the judge sees them as the Cablevision case or the, uh, or the hotel 
pay-per-view case. If they okay, look and, at and it and say, nah, you're Ivy, you're the hotel pay-per-view, you're, you're trying to get away with something and it's not right, then they lose. But I think it's more likely the judge will say, look, this is a long extension cord, just like they did with Cablevision, which said, look, they've got a DVR, only one person can watch it, what's your problem? It's just like having it in their house, except it's not. And that's exactly what they're doing. Zadiva, I think, is trying to do exactly the same thing, but they, they, they have some other have issues. Right. They do not have the letter of the law on their side. Right. Zadiva does have the spirit of the law. They're like, hey, man, you're right. It is pretty much the same. But technically, they could make make a very strong case that Zadiva is on the wrong side and, and they could get uh, completely gobsmacked on that one. Yeah, but, I think uh, I think Bamboom is in a position to actually drive some innovation forward, uh, you know, as, as a company that is a small guy who changes the way things work that other folks try to sue out of existence. Uh, I, I think they will get sued. I have no doubt about that. But I think the reason they haven't been smacked down yet is because the people are looking at this close to figure out what their options are. And there aren't as many options as a lot of these, these companies have. Well, if there's them. one thing I think it's clear is that they should be sued because everybody knows that people are paying for TV. They're all running for the hills and nobody's getting paid anymore. And uh, it's clear that uh, piracies run amok. And nobody's making money in TV. Yeah. Being TV dead is what I'm saying, yeah, right? Yeah, totally. Nobody pays for TV anymore. That's the bottom line. Let's move on to another big story. Stop everything. It's another big story. Total number of paid TV subscribers was up last year 6%. <laughs> uh, according to Instat, the... Total number of paid TV subscribers around the world was up 6% compared with 2009. Uh, research firm said that gains in subscribers were seen in nearly every region around the globe. Uh, however, when it came to cable television subscriptions, only Western Europe saw a jump. Elsewhere around the world, cable customers were migrating to satellite or IPTV. I, it doesn't matter. Uh, cable and satellite, we, we can all agree. Like, as far as business models and old media goes, uh, cable TV and satellite, same same animal, right? We don't need to make a distinction over whether or not it's beamed or, or over copper. Well, that, you know, they're making a distinction in this because people are actually increasing the number of satellite connections in their home, but decreasing the number of traditional cable connections in their home. Do you, you know, I wonder how much of that has to do with the fact that when you have a direct TV setup, direct TV doesn't also offer you cable internet. They, they are like, hey, man, we're giving you TV. You want TV? Here's TV. I mean, they do have their terrible, terrible direct PC, you know, satellite yeah, service. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but IPTV want, uh, services do the opposite. They basically say, look, we're internet. We're Fios. We're UVerse. We give you high speed internet and TV all over the same cable. So you don't, exactly. ha you know, so the, and that's on the rise as well. It's only the old fashioned, whatever that 30 ohm cable coming into your, 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 uh, your house. That's the only thing that's falling everywhere except Western Europe. Did you just bust out 30 ohms? Did I'm, you just bust out engineering terminology and frame rate? I, uh, I might've. Did I okay. do that? I mean, that's fine. That's fine. It's just, I'm just, just. Well, here. that's how was, that's how my dad would always describe the two cables when because we had the you know the little the uh, what is it this is is it seventy ohm that's the the two wires that you use to come down seventy five ohms seventy five no uh, I think is a, is like a dirty acronym so I don't know but my dad would describe the two cables there was the one that you screwed into the back that came down from the antenna on the top of the house and then there's the one that came from the cable company and he would distinguish them by the by the ohms. <laughs> That is awesome. Uh, 300 yes, ohm for the twin leads. Thanks. When we talk about... I, I think what the, the chat room's saying it's 75 ohm. I think it's 75 ohm now. I think it might have been 30 ohm back in 1982. Uh, yes, which is where you and I both live in our imaginations. Uh, the important thing is that paid content, the business model of your HBOs and your FXs and your AMCs, uh, those guys are winning. And I don't understand why they need to be such spazzes I mean, it's at least, uh, I don't know. Actually, I, I don't want to make stuff up, though. But, uh, yes, oh, everything's it's 300 changing. ohm. That's, that's my problem. Sorry. Continue. Oh, it's not 30. It was 300. Yeah. Right. Okay. This Week in Ohms I'm old. is our, our new segment. Welcome to Ohm Rate. But, but these guys... <laughs> 
<laughs> These guys are making more money year over year, and that's what makes it so insufferable to listen to them howl about piracy because it's clearly not bringing things down, and there's clearly much bigger opportunities and money to be made if they can just figure out a way to give people what they want when they want it, as we've said a million times before on the show. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I just think it's it's interesting that in this world where we're, we're in kind of inside of a bubble and it's like yeah, everybody's cord cutting, people are cord cutting, it's really not that many people cord cutting. It's interesting that people are cord cutting at all. That's why those stories are interesting to follow. But don't forget that that doesn't mean 90% are cord cutting. People are actually subscribing to television that's brought in not over the internet in rising numbers around the world still. Yeah, and not only are they not cutting the cord, but they are not cutting the cord in a massive, massive way. Like, it's shocking to me as somebody who has tried and is trying to take the leap. Like I mentioned, my only frustration is that I want the kids to be able to flip on Boomerang and be entertained for an hour without my supervision. Uh, uh, outside of that, uh, I'm shocked at how many people just are. Traditional media is still a freaking giant. It's amazing. Yeah. But, I mean, that said, do you think people are still – I mean, people aren't still watching other things the old way. We've got the Internet for Netflix. We've got Netflix streaming. It's not like – you know, one thing we can be certain of is that people aren't buying optical media anymore. As CDs are dying, DVDs got to be dying too. Uh, yes. You know what? I think we can state unequivocally that the DVD is dead. This is another frame rate prediction. The DVD must be dead – and clearly, Blu-ray reigns supreme, right? Yep. Hey, let's check out another, yet another big story. Tuck in your bootstraps. It's yet another big story. In a survey of consumers in March by the NPD Group, the research firm found people are still using DVDs and Blu-ray discs to watch movies more than all digital video options combined. <laughs> 77% of consumers reported watching a movie on DVD or Blu-ray disc unchanged from the previous year. Surveyed uh, more than 9,600 people found that 78% of home video budgets were spent on the purchase of rental, purchase or rental of DVD and Blu-ray discs. You know, I'm really worried that people are just going to remember my idiotic proclamations and not listen five seconds later to the next story and not realizing that we're being sarcastic and setting up a bit. <laughs> Like, today's the opposite day, ladies and gentlemen. We're clearly trying to say the opposite of what the actual stories are. Only in the previous story, though. Uh, it's, it's just because this kind of, it's a good reality check, which is, sure, you can get your movies on Netflix, you can get your movies from Hulu, you can get your movies from Crackle and Vudu and all these other services, but people don't yet. And when we complain no. about why don't they have a bigger selection and why don't, why don't they have a better frame rate and why, why aren't they available on more devices, that's why. You don't have the people in great numbers doing this yet. And it's also why the cable companies are so successful right now in fighting these boxes. If you had over 50% of the populace demanding to watch their movies over the Internet on a Google TV or Roku-like box... The cable companies wouldn't stand a chance. They would not be able to fight this stuff. They would not be able to violate net neutrality. The reason so, they're, they're so vicious about it right now is they know that they have to get things settled now before the wave of consumers come. Uh, that's a really good point. And it makes so, so I guess essentially your case is that they are trying to win the battle before the other combatant even knows the rules of engagement here. They just right. want to jump in. They're like, and it's all settled. This is how it's going to be. Right. Because once you've got the, the masses knocking at your door, somebody's going to crack. So, you know, it may be an oligopoly, but somebody, Time Warner, Cablevision, maybe Charter, is just going to go, fine, you know what, we're just going to deliver over the internet because that's what everybody wants and we know we can make money. And once that domino falls, they all fall. So they're all digging in their heels right now trying to protect the old model that brings them in more money uh, so that when those masses come, they can hold out. And they can say, right. no, we're going to provide you something better. We've got tiered internet that gives you all $30 movies that you can rent right now. Okay, so we're bringing up the $30 movies again. I, I because, because, 
We got we got more emails on that. By the way, that will be a subject we'll talk again about later. We got another people chiming in on that. Uh, look, here, here, first of all, the the most significant thing to this story to me is the fact that is not that DVD dominates. Of course, it dominates. It's what we've been doing for over a decade now. The important thing for me is that why is Blu-ray not do dominating? Yes. $70 for a brand new Blu-ray player. Think of all the PS3s that are out on the market right now, and people don't care. I'm going to wager that there are people who buy the DVD combo discs, and they open it up, and they pull out the DVD just because they happen to instead of the Blu-ray. They pop it in, and they realize, oh, I did the DVD and not the Blu-ray. I guess I should switch it. And then they just watch the DVD. Like this is this is I think a big part of the evidence of diminishing returns of increased resolution. The the leap we are not looking at from DVD to Blu-ray a leap from black and white to color. Where uh, and and you know I, I was gonna say like 3D, but that's not even a good example. We are looking at incremental improvement that can only be no, seen and understood by a certain level of sophistication. Just as in fact, I'm gonna say this. I'm going to say that the number of people who insist on Blu-ray over DVD is roughly the same number of people who are cutting the cord and trying to go without cable television. Uh, well, you know, I don't know how we uh, how we get that number. I do know that uh, if, if player sales last year over 20 million units was split evenly between DVD and Blu-ray models. So you got 10 million people still buying a good old-fashioned DVD player, not buying a Blu-ray player. Now that is silly. Now uh, I mean, unless Finances are really a problem. I can picture, a, you know. Well, your, I, you know what? It's not about. That's what I mean. It's not about finances. It's about not caring. They just say, you know what? I know DVD. DVD's fine. DVD's good enough for me. Why do I want to learn some new thing? I've heard problems with the encryption and the this and that. I'm just going to get a DVD player. I've got a bunch of DVDs, and I just want to get. I don't want to have to mess with this. They people just don't see the advantage. They don't don't see the big leap forward here like they did between VHS and DVD, like they did between cassettes and CDs. You know what? We haven't really talked about on this program the value of convenience over fidelity when it comes to the way yeah. we enjoy video. That's the base. The reason YouTube is ubiquitous and awesome. And in our minds, even though YouTube does offer up to like, what, 1080p now or ridiculous high def, I still, in my mind, associate YouTube as low-quality video that always does in a pinch. I can find whatever I want with a few search terms, and I'll be able to see it, and I'll be able to remember that Atari video game from 1982 or whatever. Yeah. And uh, uh, convenience always trumps fidelity when it comes to these kinds of things. That's why MP3 is our standard music service, right? Because convenience trumps fidelity. We don't care about yes. lossless. We don't care about high quality audio. We care about portability, transportability, and playability. You probably have Absolutely. about the same amount of people that are audiophiles that have the huge sound systems and the perfect listening environment as you do the Blu-ray fanatics. Yeah, you know, for the same Absolutely. reasons. Uh, same thing. Same thing with uh, with. Uh, well, actually, somebody in the chat room says that's why Beta lost to VHS. Uh, you know, that brings in the porn question of uh, because a lot of people, you know, whichever side pornography has taken has always won, including with Blu-ray when yeah. it was the HD DVD. Debbie Does Dallas came out on Blu-ray. Exactly. Did it really? That was that was one of the first porn Blu-ray uh, releases. It was definitely the first big pro high-profile one. It was the oh, wow. shot across the bow. <laughs> so, uh, but but the point is, uh, I, I'm not surprised, and uh, and of course, one of the other things we wanted to talk about is why has Blu-ray failed to catch hold? Is it a fact that the population in general just doesn't get it? They don't understand what they're missing? Or is it a case where they, they're like, yes, I fully understand how much better it is. I understand it's the, virtually the exact same cost per item, uh, although I, I suspect the Blu-rays are probably slightly more the expensive. The discs themselves are more expensive, yeah. Okay, then that's what it is. Then they're like, you know what? I would rather not spend, I don't care, it doesn't matter if it's a dollar more or ten dollars more, I would rather not spend that for increased fidelity. I'd rather have it cheaper and faster and on demand when I want it. And again, you want, that's, so Wait a sorry. minute, you're saying you want things that are cheap, fast, and easy? Uh, yes, and I, I defy you, sir, to name one thing in this whole godforsaken planet that's cheap, fast, and easy. Squarespace. And dot, looks good. Squarespace.com. Square, there you go. Squarespace.com. In fact, they're our sponsor this, this uh, week on Framerate. 
That's highly improbable that I would ask a random question like that. You would suddenly have an exactly perfect answer and that they would happen to be a sponsor. For cheap, some reason, I'm cheap because you get a 14 day free trial because you're listening to frame rate. That's good because go to, I'm cheap and I don't like to spend money. You okay? go to squarespace.com slash frame rate and you get the 14 day yeah. free trial. Uh, month to month, no commitment necessary. 10% off if you do commit to uh, one year after the free trial, 20% off if you commit to two years. Now, hold on. Okay. Okay. So you're saying, first of all, they probably wouldn't appreciate it if I made like a funny joke website using their engine. They because they care. probably have better things to do they don't than care. to make frameratesawesome.squarespace.com, right? You can make frameratesawesome.squarespace.com fast. You go set it up Wait. right now. Boom. You've got it. It's there. But, but I probably have to, do I have to give a credit card for that kind nope, of thing? No, no credit card required. 14 day free trial. What? Just like that? And I could be yeah. online instantly? And it's going to look good because you can pick one of their templates and just put up a template that's designed by somebody who's like really good at design, unlike See, this, me. Okay. And it's easy template. because you can just pick the modules. You go in and you say, okay, I want this here and that there, and I want a little Twitter widget right there, and here's what my about page should say, and I'm going to type that in, and boom, you're done. See, that sounds confusing to me because I'm not good with HTML. I don't you really don't need know. to know HTML. You just go in and you open the thing that says, what do you want in the main body? And you type it in and then you press save and it's there. Now, wait a minute. So it's like, like if I'm, let's, what if I'm on my friend's computer? Do I need some special just, program? No, no, you, well, yeah, you need a browser. Do you have a browser? I, I mean, I assume they, isn't yeah. it installed by default yeah. on all systems? Exactly. Well, then that sounds incredibly fast, easy, cheap, and amazing looking. You should I'm gonna try I'm going to have to give this Squarespace... A trial. Now, is there, now, I'll tell you, is there a special URL? Because here's the thing. Right, right. I know they probably advertise on a lot of shows. I'd prefer to go to some special URL that would let them know that they learned about it from this totally spontaneous conversation that you and I are having. Where should I go? Uh, yeah, exactly. We, we have a URL specifically for frame rate. So you can say, I'm signing up for Squarespace because I heard Brian and Tom talking about it. So you go to squarespace.com slash frame rate, spelled out F-R-A-M-E-R-A-T-E. Awesome. Well, I'll go there instantly. You, By the way, totally unrelatedly, somebody just sent to me a website called frameratesawesome.squarespace.com. Yeah, I just... I, it's already... It looks totally professional. You know, like, I, I got to say, it was so easy, I created it. Whoa. What? what? Seriously. No. There you go. Yes? Made no. it while you guys were yes? doing the ad. Yes. That's amazing. Uh, Boom. Dude, Raygun01, while it's so easy, live while you're on the air, while he's live switching the episode, he was able to create the yes. website. That's how fast and easy it is. Head on over to squarespace.com slash frame rate and start your free two-week trial. Time for Film Found. Hey, Brian, do you, do you ever watch Seinfeld? Seinfeld. Never heard the of it. television What's show, Seinfeld? Jerry Seinfeld? Like, show, about show about nothing? That, that sounds like a terrible idea for a show. It will clearly never, ever be successful. And <laughs> it's certainly one, of, one of the most popular shows ever on, on television. Never heard of it. Seinfeld. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what? What is it? Uh, maybe it'll turn into something for him someday. That <laughs> Seinfeld kid. You know, you should probably catch up on it, but because you're so skeptical, you're, you're going to want to watch it for free, right? Uh, oh, yeah, no. It, this is it, not it, an it, ad, by the way. Uh, Crackle <laughs> has an app now uh, that you can get for the iPhone and iPad, and it lets you watch free movies and TV shows. One of the TV shows is Seinfeld. I actually really dislike this story because when you – all of the headlines, and, and there are a number of them on there, they all say, Seinfeld, only on Crackle, Seinfeld, Crackle, Seinfeld, Crackle. And then you read the article, and they're like, Seinfeld – all, uh, all 10 episodes that were authorized right. for distribution. It's, the the, fact, the show is not available from Hulu, Netflix, or iTunes. That's, that's, the, big, that's the big deal, right? Sure. But, but 10 episodes? The 10 show episodes? is actually not available anywhere else except for these 10 episodes. Oh, yeah. No, there's not a single site on the entire internet that somebody could get a torrent of bits that would construct right. another episode of Seinfeld. Exactly. There's no other place on there. It's only on Crackle, right? You'd have to go to the Research Bay. <laughs> the Research Bay. I like that one. That's, they're, uh, they're temporarily yeah. no, that's, renamed. Um, this, uh, I, I, I hate stories like this. This is obviously a ploy 
to cash in on a name and it's this half-assed measure where it's like, look, I understand you're worried about losing money. You're worried about the transition to the digital age that we live in. But for, for crying out loud, if you're gonna, if you're gonna have a press release that has Seinfeld associated with it. Ten episodes? How many? There had to be like, a, what, 150 episodes of Seinfeld? How oh, yeah. Many episodes? yeah there, I don't remember how many seasons, but Ten easily. Ten episodes? Easily. Yeah. What is this, a joke? Uh, they're free. What do you want? Uh, okay, are they free or are they ad-supported? Because if I'm watching an ad, if I'm watching pre-roll, not free, bro. It's broadcast oh, media. Oh, please. It's a free enough. Are you saying I, that, that when, I, when you watch things on Hulu, they're not free? No, no. What I'm saying is, is uh, if you're going to right now, I can watch Seinfeld every freaking night free by, by say, breaking by the law. Broadcast television, right? With with advertisements, right? Well, so that's exactly. no, none of broadcast television is free either. No, 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 no. What what I'm saying is that's familiar. Broadcast television is totally. Oh, familiar. those ads are okay. They actually have fewer okay. ads well, on these on, on web services. What I'm saying is you don't get to put out a press release and act like. Your service is revolutionary when you offer virtually nothing more than we already get for free on the broadcast media. This just smells like like NBC wearing gold chains trying to be hip it's like Sony, the kids. actually. Wh whoever. I don't care. I mean, the, po the point is uh, you're, you're old. You're busted. What are you doing in this dark alley? Give me your wallet, Grandpa. That's what I want to say to this whoever wrote this press release. I didn't read the press release. I just read the uh, blog posting. The press release really got you <laughs> like, upset. Well, it's just, it's just, um, it's, it's, it's a non-story. You know, the it's, problem, it's, that's it's, why I don't read press releases. I very assiduously do not read them because they're always written so horribly. I will be so distorted on what the story actually is when I read well, a press release because they're vile. Well, and you know what it is? It's like, um... Uh, after having written enough press releases to promote myself and my, uh -huh. my Horse Apples live show, uh, you know, it's uh, you, you, you get an idea for what buttons will push people. And somebody knew that saying, mention the side, push the Seinfeld thing. We're the only people in the whole world that have Seinfeld. That'll be, that'll make headlines. And, and when you read just the headline, you're like, Seinfeld, crackle, hey, we're going on this crazy internet ride. And then it turns out to be totally not true. Ten episodes of Seinfeld. But they have, I mean, let's, let's be fair. They have more than just ten episodes of Seinfeld. They have other shows and other movies on there as well. I think the right. more restrictive aspect of this is the fact that you can only uh, get this stuff on iOS for this app. This is, this is just launching the Crackle service on iOS. Crackle's existed on the web for a while, uh, but, they, but they're not rolling out to Android or any other platform. Uh, and well, and I understand. That. I can it, watch it, Ultraviolet right now on my desktop. The Crackle's been around for a while. Yeah, no, of course, of course. Yeah, and this is a new platform with the iOS right. and stuff. And I understand. Look, there are legitimate things to be excited about this. Sony's entry into playing the game. At least they've pulled back a chair and they're sitting at the table to join us here. But to walk in and announce how awesome you are, and by the way, you brought your good yeah, friend. Yeah, but now you're going Seinfeld by you're going by the you. press release. The press release always says how awesome I am. Well, whoever wrote no. it, you can't hold that against them. That's just the art of writing press releases. I don't know. I feel I feel like the new media poker tables there and up rolls Sony last minute. Like, by the way, I brought my good personal friend Seinfeld. You know that name, don't you? And you're excited about that. And then you look over and it's clearly a cardboard cutout standee of Seinfeld standing next to him. It's just, you know, it's like, you, you, well, you congratulations. You grabbed headlines by saying the word Seinfeld and crackle in the same headline. But now, what, how yeah. do you feel about this? This is the opposite. This is subtlety at its best. Netflix has slipped in a link right under their advertisement for themselves on the page for Little Fockers, which is like the third, and, and in my opinion, one too many movie uh, in right. the uh, Ben Stiller series, that says, buy now. Shh. What? But and then if you what click on it, it takes you to the Little Fockers website where you can order the DVD. Okay, now, but I, I do feel like this is different, at least in, in spirit. I mean, it doesn't matter in actuality, but in spirit, Netflix was against this. Didn't they push back against actually no, no, no. getting selling this DVDs? This is Netflix this? doing it. Netflix has always said, we're not going to sell DVDs. We're just not going to do it. And the movie studios have tried to bribe them, saying, hey, we'll let you uh, get earlier releases of DVD for rentals if you sell them. And Netflix said, nope, that's not our business. We're not into that. So it's odd that this little link shows up that just takes you out 
to the D, the the actual Little Fockers website to buy it. So Netflix isn't changing their stance. They're they're not saying we're getting into the business of selling them. They're just providing essentially a referral link. You know what? I'm so totally down for that. Like essentially what they're doing is they're selling ads. They're they're yeah. doing exactly what they wanted to do and they're like, "Oh, wait, we can subsidize our business by by just providing a referral link well then hells yes and so it's like that i, I think I, i've i've psychoanalyzed this you don't like the when people like act all big and nasty like sony like hey we're crackle. we got seinfeld that's the loud obnoxious person in the room you like subtle like hey, you know what we're netflix we're not gonna make a big deal we're not gonna put out a press release but you know you can, you can buy now if you want well and, you know, and, cool. and you know what i think you're exactly right because netflix that's masterful manipulation when you just take it easy and you understand the way people think you're like uh Hey, whatever, bro. If you want to buy it, that's cool. If not, you're watching it. You already got it. It's free, right? Because you I mean, already paid. Whatever. Whatever. You, whatever. You do what you need. It's like, I. It just seems. It just seems artless the way this press release was put out. That's all I'm gonna say. It. It annoyed me how, how they're like, and we'll mention really, Seinfeld. Everybody will freak out. It really bothered you. I know, and I, I know this isn't true, but it's almost like this is the first press release you've ever read. It no, just, I, I know. And I know you've read Something plenty of them. About Something about like I read the whole thing and then the last. Uh, line yeah, you know what? That's what you. That was your, that was your mistake. Okay, well, okay, <laughs> that, that's fine. You, it's like I I I ate the whole chocolate cake and I felt sick. <laughs> I mean, that's, anyway, that's anyway. not good eating. Press releases. Fair All right, enough, yeah, let's uh, let's move on to uh, some good news. Uh, Bradley Denton's amazing comic novel Buddy Holly is alive and well on Ganymede, which I haven't read, but now that I've 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 learned about it, I am totally going to buy. Uh, is going to be adapted into a big budget science fiction movie. Uh, the premise is simple. Oliver Vale is about to watch a John Wayne movie uh, uh, by his satellite dish when the transmission is interrupted by a shot of a young bu Buddy Holly standing in a bubble on an airless rock holding at a guitar. Holly reads a sign hanging from the camera in front of him, and it says, for assistance, contact Oliver Vale. And then everyone starts to believe that it's Oliver Vale who has sent the transmission, and they try to hunt him down. Uh, they have now ch turned this comic into an upcoming movie, and we have the trailer. That is a great synopsis that I did not pick up at all from the trailer. But do we have audio on the trailer? Just you and I. We interrupt this program for a special news bulletin. Officials have confirmed the identity of a man thought to be responsible for the worldwide television blackout and the appearance of what has become known as the Buddy Holly transmissions. The suspect has been identified as Oliver Vale. He was last seen wearing a bright blue moon suit, orange high top sneakers, and driving a vintage motorcycle. He should be considered dangerous. It's just you and me now. Okay? Obviously, this is a uh, you know an early trailer where it's just one scene. You don't get a sense of the entire movie, but it looks pretty good to me. I actually loved the first half, and for some reason, actively disliked the second half. And I can't explain why. It's not fair. But oh, I think it was, maybe maybe it was this giant CG UFO <laughs> that showed up at the end. But but it was a uh, uh, I I I'm I am on the fence on this one, but I am very very intrigued. Now, how are you doing in the uh, in the movie draft? It seems like uh, you've had all of the movies in April. We're almost out of April. You've got Fast Five and Prom coming up this week, uh, and and Source Code has been your biggest hit so far, thirty six million. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you this much. First of all, when I bought all my movies, somebody after the fact did an analysis of what movies all of us bought up against the projections from the Hollywood Stock Exchange, and in the early projections, I was. I was second place, like only maybe like 20 million behind Sarah. So it's like anything could happen. 
all so far all three of my first movies maybe all four of my first movies including scream have underperformed expectations so that i'm not totally hosed just yet but it is not looking good for me so far it could be that Fast Five is a major surprise hit, in which case that'll change everything. By the way, unrelatedly... Oh, right. prom, has, prom is not yours. I, I made that mistake. Prom is Justin Robert Young's. Yeah, correct, correct. But uh, unrelatedly, I'm totally going to watch Fast Five the moment it comes out because it looks awesome. Do you know what else was, looks awesome? Did you watch the video trailer for, for Rise of the Apes? Well, yes, I did because I own Rise of the Apes in our summer Dude, blockbuster movie draft. That may have been the buy of the season because I did not expect anything from it, but I could not be more excited now that I've seen the trailer. Tell me we have that queued up and we can look at it. Yeah, let's, let's take a look at a little bit of it right here. Especially just the end scene. If you show nothing else, show the end scene. Here, I'll cut forward. <laughs> you cut right to the silent part in the middle. <laughs> this is bad luck. Yeah, for the audio version, it's all like some trailers, just video shots. So That scene is so haunting oh God, with the team just looking at the sleeping couple. I have no idea what you're dealing with. It's James Franco, right? And obviously the, the plot is they're experimenting on apes, and they make the apes intelligent, and you can guess the rest. Look at that! That looks so much better than Wait. the uh, Marky Mark one. That's the scene. <laughs> Sold on the whole thing. Do you see that chimp? And there is intelligence and malice and calculation in his eyes. I was not a fan of the CGI apes until I saw that last thing. That uh, is, yeah. I'm so excited about this movie. I love the original franchise so much. I, I, yeah, I, I, I want to see the origin story. And, and there's an article today about whether we're getting done with origin stories, whether we're getting burnt out on them. But this is one that's never been done. Uh, is that right? I feel like there might have, I might be wrong in saying that, but I certainly haven't seen it. And this looks like it might be done really well. I, I want to see how the apes take over was Earth. The, I think it was Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, or um, uh, there was one that, that, that showed uh, Caesar coming to power in the, uh, you know, as... Uh, you know, as you can imagine, the Planet of the Apes franchise sort of each movie was successively or successively worse than the one before it. Yeah, uh, I think one of the Conquest been... shows them coming to power, but does it actually show how they're created? I can't remember. That that was. Uh... No, oh no, no! Conquest is when the apes come back to modern day and they sn sneak off the ape that eventually becomes Caesar, who says no. But there's one after that that actually shows the rise of power. I believe. We'll we'll see. Okay. Uh, let's uh, uh, finish up our uh, our film film here. We got a lot with uh, Netflix eyeing uh, the ability to allow you to do multiple streams. Uh, we don't we don't have to discuss this much. Just just letting people know uh, that you may get the ability in your streaming only or one DVD plan to have people in two parts of the house watching two different Netflix movies. Right now they say, Wait, oh, you, you can only watch one stream at a time. Let's let's make bets. What do you think they're going to charge for a second stream? Because to be honest. The eight dollars a month plan, eight ninety nine a month or whatever they're charging, is so ridiculously cheap compared to what you get. They could charge me another eight ninety nine for a second stream, and I would probably pay it. No, you know what I think they'll do, which I think would be really smart, is to say, look, you could go up to two DVDs and get multiple, right? So why don't we just charge you halfway between the two DVD price and the streaming price? So it's so like you're talking, talking twelve ninety nine. Yeah, or so? yeah. So it's not the full. It's not totally doubling your price. I think that would be yeah. the smart way to go. I'm seeing that. All right, let's move on to the tube tops. First of all, very sad news today. Uh, Elizabeth Sladen, who played Sarah Jane Smith uh, during the Pertwee and Baker eras of Doctor Who, passed away at the age of 63. Uh, we learned about it today. Uh, BBC has issued a statement. Uh, she had apparently been battling cancer for quite a while. Uh, she was definitely among the most popular characters on Doctor Who, probably the most popular of the companions of Doctor Who. She had a spinoff series in the 80s. She had another spinoff series in the modern Doctor Who area, in the reboot era, uh, after a guest appearance on one of the David Tennant era shows. Uh, and she will definitely be missed. Uh, she was still an active uh, participant in the Doctor Who universe. She was the, she was the one they did... Um, uh, spoiler alert. Can we go to spoiler alert, yellow? Uh, oh, yeah. There was a... a you stop talking there. 
All right, uh, continue. Uh, the um, that was the one where they did like a reunion. It was her and K9 in the David Tennant phase. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, that, that was a really good episode. And she, man, she's still. I I can't. She was 62. She looked amazing. 63. Yeah. 63. And 63 wow. and battling cancer. Kept it on. Uh, kept well, it on the then, quiet. If, if somehow you could get more points for looking hot while you're battling cancer, I would definitely award them to her because she looked amazing and uh, it was a really good episode. I'm really bummed to hear that. We'll miss you, Sarah Jane Smith. Uh, Game of Thrones, on a happier note, premiered in the U.K. and the U.S. this weekend. Uh, and I watched it. Absolutely loved spoiler, it. Spoiler alerts. Yeah, we, we should put spoiler alert red from here Oh, boy. Exactly. Because yeah. we, we're going to talk some Game of Thrones. That's the game of Thrones. You All have right. been warned. Dude, uh, number one spoiler that probably will surprise no one, we are so way excited about this. Like, I couldn't help myself. Like, normally, when we watch certain types of content, I make sure I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to talk about that on frame rate with Tom later. I full-on called you within minutes of the <laughs> thing being over, and you were stuck on the West Coast feed, so you hadn't seen it. Yeah, it was so funny. Time, I, I, I have the East Coast feed, but I had opted to go over to Veronica Belmont's to watch it because we do Sword and Laser together, and we were going to talk about it, and she only had the, the West Coast feed, so I had to wait three hours. I actually uh -huh. left the house at 6 o'clock because I didn't want to be tempted into watching it before I left. So I just, I went early. You're a good man. Okay, so I want to hear your verdict first. Talk to me. What did you, what, what, what did you feel about it? Um, I'll, I'll tell you this. I was not as excited about Game of Thrones as I was about Walking Dead after episode one. I... However, I was not in any way disappointed. Nothing, uh, everything was as expected. Uh, and a couple of things just... You know, I wasn't ever like, oh, my God, this is blowing me away. But I was always like, yep, this is what I expected. This is what I wanted. This looks right. This feels right. I really was just at the end of it wanting more. I was like, that's uh, not enough. I, I need more. So tell me this. What about the, um, uh, I, guess, I guess the question, uh, how long ago was the last time you read the Game uh, Game of Thrones or the whole Song of Ice and Fire series. Well, the last time I, when I read Game of Thrones was mm, two years ago, I think. Okay, maybe that has to do with it because I think a big part of why I absolutely capital L O V E D this show was because I was surprised at how much I kind of have forgotten. Like there was characters that would pop up, and I'm like, oh, that's the guy who does the thing, and it frees the other dude, and it makes possible. That. Oh. I was so excited. Like, watching the first episode has me so excited. I want to go back and read the series all over again. Definitely, uh, I've it, had that feeling myself of wanting to reread. Yes. Well, and it's only been two years. That's amazing. Uh, and, of course, we, we should point out that the book, the next book, A Dance, for, uh, Dance of Dragons, uh, comes out, what, two months from now in, in June or Supposedly, July? Supposedly, it comes out. In July, yes. We've been hearing the same. It's the it's the Duke Nukem Forever of books. Yeah. <laughs> Dance for Dragons. Uh, and okay, here, I, oh, go go ahead. Okay, things they got right. Number one, the look and the feel and the casting and the characters are spot freaking on. The differences that I have are very minor. One of the things I absolutely fell in love with the voice that Roy Dotrice used in the audiobook to portray Tyrion Lannister. And uh, 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 what, what's his name? Um, Dink, uh, something Dinkle? What's the, the Tyrion? Who plays T Tyrion? Oh, you mean the actor's name? Yes. Uh, something... Yeah, I'm blanking on it right now myself. Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. Peter Dink Dinklage Dinkle. is a awesome, awesome Tyrion. He just doesn't happen to have the voice that I imagined in my mind for the well, whole thing. Well, you know thing. what? And he's too pretty. I mean, yes. I don't mind. I'm not disappointed. I think because I think he's doing a great job of capturing the spirit. But Tyrion, I always imagine looking a little more like Gimli from Lord Trolling. of the Rings uh, yeah. rather than than like Dinklage. Uh, so, so that is a little. That is one of the few that doesn't look exactly the way I imagined it. Uh, he will not be looking pretty for long, if you remember. Oh, I know, your, I know. Uh, so, but the um, uh, oh, another thing, uh, a major, major difference. Uh, uh, Daenerys Targaryen, there is a very subtle, very touching scene in the first book about her first night when she's been married off to this, uh, this, you know, uh, essentially some kind of wild, you know, wild prince with a Dothraki. And um, there comes a, a touching association 
where even though it's less than ideal circumstances, you find the two of them connecting to each other. You did not see that. They did not. Movie. They did not mess with that. That was. It was. That was a little, a little clumsily handled. Uh, it will and I guess honest, maybe that does verge on a bit of a disappointment for me, although I have I'm, a feeling that they're going to develop that later. Well, look, first of all, imagine you don't know any of the story and imagine what you need to feel for Daenerys. Mm -hmm. You need to feel that she's lost and way in over her head. And they did a great job of portraying exactly those emotions with the way they did it. I could not be happier with the first episode. Uh, Game of Thrones already renewed for a second season after the ratings report uh, came in. Initial ratings uh, were fantastic. Got a 1.6 share, which translates at somewhere between 2.5 and 3 million viewers. Uh, that was just for the first showing of the first episode. You know, on HBO, they repeat it over and over. So uh, they're going to get even better ratings over that period. Uh, Game of Thrones getting 743,000 viewers for its first hour in the UK. Uh, turns out the 2.2 uh, the, uh, million did not include the Sunday night repeats, by the way. So it's, it's getting plenty of viewers. It's already been renewed, and it's going to do very well. Premiering also, this... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, there's one other thing. There's, uh, uh, again, we're still on spoiler alert. Oh, red. Okay. Uh, there's, a, <laughs> there's a scene at the end that um, is not suitable for uh, mainstream consumption, and they did not change a thing about it. If there's one thing I'm super excited about the whole series is the respect they clearly have for the actual story as it was told, warts and all, because there's some unpalatable, you mean boobs harsh, and all. harsh crap that happens during this story. Stuff that, like, uh, I mean, we're talking about, keep in mind, uh, for those of you who don't know, this story is based on the War of the Roses. Instead of the, the Yorks and the McAllisters, it's the Starks and the Lannisters. The Lancasters. So, or Lancasters, sorry, that's what it was. I mean, it's Lannister uh, in Game of Thrones, but it was Lancasters in War of the Roses. So. Lancasters is what it was. Thank you for correcting me, because I uh, knew I was guessing on the other one. But, uh, but we're talking about kids who are married off at age 13, the, moments they, the moment they have their first menstruation and stuff, and that is all presented exactly how it is in the book, and it'll be interesting to see what they stick with and what they chicken out on on the actual series. But I could not be excited. This Saturday, the BBC does it right. They freaking premiere Doctor Who at the same day in the United States and in the United Woo! Kingdom. Uh, so I, I'm very excited to, to watch the kickoff of the new season. And they're actually featuring America. The Doctor's going to be in America, so they've been making a big deal on BBC America about those scenes from those shows. Also, Neil Gaiman wrote an episode for this year's uh, Doctor Who. So they're, they're pulling out all the stops. This is going to be not, a fantastic it's a bogus, season. It's not a bogus Monster of the Week episode either. From the interview that uh, we are talking about, this io9 article, where uh, he called his episode a game changer. Apparently he's doing something that will seriously affect the, the lore, the, the, the backstory of, of the Doctor Who universe. It's a game changer. It's a game changer. <laughs> yeah. In other Neil Gaiman news, HBO have optioned the TV rights to American Gods. Uh, did you read American Gods? I did. Uh, we read it as a sword and laser uh, book club selection. I also read it before that, so I've read it twice. Uh, Gaiman's co-writing the script with Robert Richardson, who's won a couple of Oscars for JFK and The Aviator, and Tom Hanks is set to produce. I think there's a lot of visual content that I think will play much better. To be honest, like American Gods, like with, with the Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones, I just want them not to screw up the book. But I actually think American Gods could be better as a miniseries than it was as, as a book. Well, and and that's like why I'm glad they have Gaiman on board as a writer to guide that. Yes. Like, yes, let's change this. This is the way to tell this story visually. Because he's actually adept at both ways of, of telling stories. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and he, um, uh, yeah, ab absolutely. That's, uh, uh, so before Song of Ice and Fire, HBO did this giant, pr did you watch the giant advertisement for the HBO Go service? Uh, no, actually, I, I missed, I didn't see that at all. No, I, well, I set my DVR. I must have been in the other in, room or something. In the morning, I called HBO, or I, I'm sorry, I called, uh, I called Time Warner, and uh, the person I got on the phone, I got as far as saying, hey, so tonight is a Game of Thrones, and she said, oh, I know. Are you as excited as I am? Yeah. And, so we, and so she set me up with the service, so I set the DVR, and we watched it after the fact. But, like, the first four minutes wasn't even the show. It was, it was, there was a good two-minute-long promo advertising nothing, but HBO Go, and uh, as you're seeing here in the ad, very prominently featuring Game of Thrones. It's clear that HBO is very excited about this franchise, and it's clear 
that they want to do something very ambitious with the HBO Go service to where when you subscribe to HBO, you can get the content on whatever device you want, wherever you are. Who knows how close to that will actually get, but... Uh, regardless, kudos to you, HBO, for stepping in the right direction. Hey, and DirecTV is now a partner with HBO Go. So I, I actually noticed on the HBO On Demand on DirecTV that they're, they're pointing that out. And Game of Thrones is its own menu item on On Demand. There's, like, all the genres of shows, and then Game of Thrones is one of the items. So you're right. They're, that they're totally is going awesome. After that. Uh, Did you watch any this week? Did I watch what? TV. Uh, did I watch television? Yes, I TV. did. Uh, besides Game of Thrones, I watched uh, the season finale of Being Human from Sci-Fi. Fantastic. I, it's different enough from the BBC version that I think it's absolutely worth watching. Deep characters, good stories, not cartoonish at all the way I feared. Uh, also started catching up on Stargate Universe. I'd been putting it off because it's already been canceled. And I was like, well, it's not going to matter if I watch it live or not. And I was a little sad. Uh, but... Man, I'm I'm even more sad now that I've watched a few episodes of it because it is fantastic. That's the chatter I'm seeing on Twitter. I know uh, uh, Colleen, uh, who of course built the Twit Studios, uh, she was very upset after how awesome these episodes were to just watch it, knowing that it's, it's the Firefly Firefly effect all over again, right? Yeah. Well, may I don't hardly anything is is Firefly, right? But uh, yeah, I think it is that that same effect of but you're not of, of people watching it later, watching it in other ways, and supporting it in ways that aren't currently valued or monetized enough uh, to keep it on the air. Also, when it started, it, w it was shaky. That first season was shaky, and, and it, got a lot of, uh, it got a lot of bad vibes to some people, especially people who are really into the original Stargate because it was so different. A lot of people thought it was a cheap ripoff of Battlestar Galactica, but man, did they turn it around. They got some great stories, and, and I'm really interested to see how they wrap this up. Yeah, my only uh, TV that I watched, uh, I rolled my ankle. I actually thought I broke it because I stepped on a rock and it rolled under. So I felt a crunch, and it turns out it was that rock rolling underneath me. But I landed down, I was just like, son of a bee, tell me I did not just break my ankle. So while I was laid up for the rest of the night, I used the iPad app, which they are adding channels left and right for. I mean, it's almost like watching TV. Strangely, though, as with real TV, 99% of it is crap I don't want to watch. So I ended up watching, uh, I think it was the last half of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. But again, kudos to, uh, guess who gets the thumbs up in Brian's book, is Time Warner for trying to make our content available on whatever box we want to watch it on. All right, let's move on to Interferon. More viral videos. You know, one of the, one of the reasons we have uh, interferon is is not just to highlight viral videos, but also uh, web shows. This is, you know, we've got movies, we've got TV shows, and we've got web shows. And uh, there's one that I've been watching recently that I'm like, you know what? This is this is what I should be looking for more often. The Fine Brothers Productions have a series called Kids React To uh, that is absolutely fantastic. They'll play a video for kids and then sort of interview them about it. One of the, one of the the best recently was uh Rebecca Black, although they just posted one today about Charlie Sheen. Uh and uh, the kids are hilarious. They I'm sure they they screened these to find some kids with good personality and and critical uh opinions, but it's just so it's so fun. It's it's like the modern day version of kids say the darndest things. That's my favorite part. Yes. That's my favorite part. Only with more uh inappropriate references. And it's funny, it's funny to be like, man, there's a big gap from 8 years old to 12 years old. Yeah. Once you cross over to 8 year, to 12 years old, you are a sassy little kid who has your own idea of what's appropriate and what's not. With the Rebecca Black one, uh, the, some of the younger kids on the 8-year-old side were like, no, I, I like it. You know, it's, it's fun. <laughs> and then the, the teenagers were like, this is the worst thing ever. Like, how could you have ever perpetrated this on the populace? Uh, which is belying the fact that we all think, like, oh, it's the teeny boppers who like this. It's not. It's it's the below 10 boppers, apparently. But I'll tell you what, though. I think they're. I think you're right. When we're talking nine and under, it doesn't matter what they're seeing. I'm like, these are the pretty moving pictures. This is awesome. Uh, so it is. It looks like it's a cast of the same kids. They yeah, all they've got a panel that, that, that reoccur from episode to episode. Well, I bet I bet they shot like five of these in a day or a weekend or something where they just showed five or six different videos and they cut out all the best part. But this is great. This is brilliant. <laughs> uh, let's move on to The Walking Dead making of. 
Yeah, I loved the first half of this. This is a video that breaks down. I was shocked at how many of the effects that we see in The Walking Dead are actually 100% digital. And this this video, uh, it's, it, you know, it's got great music. It's well cut. It goes through all your favorite scenes of The Walking Dead and reveals what parts are green screen composited, where they came in from. For example, one of the most powerful scenes in the whole series when he comes out of the uh, when he comes out of the hospital and there's all the bodies around him, I had no idea all of those bodies were totally fake and none of them were there. Yeah, he's just walking through an empty parking lot. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> now, and uh, now, late the later half of the video is when you get to the points that there were a little more limitations on the budget. And and first of all, good for The Walking Dead on spending more of their SFX budget on the first episodes than on the last. Uh, but uh, but seriously, some of the some of the stuff in the last episode was. It was not of the quality that you saw in the first half. Let me just put it that way. That's about as nice as I can put it. Today is also a big day, the day we're recording this, because this is the day Portal 2 comes out, which I, like an idiot, uh, did not order a day and date release because the PS3 version gives you a free copy of the Steam version for PC. So it's like getting two versions in one. So I'm waiting yeah. for my PS3 copy to arrive. But there's an interactive Super 8 trailer is this come yes. on the video game, Portal 2? It's, it's extra content that gets unlocked, and the whole thing happens inside the video game engine. So uh, I went ahead and actually, just before we did this, I went ahead and, and played it live. But basically, you go to the extras part of the menu, you click on Super 8, it loads, and you see art from the Super 8 movie, and then it starts off. All of a sudden, you're just on a train. And this is, uh, this is actually the footage of, of me exploring the area. You explore up and down the train. You get some... Uh, it's hard to describe. In, in J.J. Abrams fashion, it's very difficult to know what's happening, but you're intrigued because why are you on this chain, train? What are these documents about? It's clear that they're moving something from one point to another. And uh, essentially, if you could make a three-minute interactive vignette of the content that was in Super 8, that's what this is like, right on up to the explosion of the train, which should be coming up here shortly. They give you lots of stuff to look at. So you're, so you're just riding along in the train from Super 8, and Correct. It's, a, it's a game that you're playing. You have, you have no weapons, you can't even jump. You're just riding in a train, and then you hear the radio chatter, Then it blows up. When do we get the trailer? Well, and so and so again, think about the think about the teaser trailer. The train collides with with the, the truck. It right. explodes, and then you wake up and you find yourself in the wreckage of the train. I'm gonna actually scoot it ahead here. As you stumble through the wreckage of the train, you eventually. So you're not getting a trailer. You're getting to play part of the movie. It sounds like you're living. What the, what happens in the trailer? I get it. Okay, so this so, yeah, so this is not this is this this is you inside the game of the trailer, not a new trailer. Right, and for example, right here you get to that iconic, the side of the train bus open. Oh, and you get to totally see. Wait, it went black. And that's how it is. Ah, so you don't get to see it at all. That's really cool. Yeah. Good job. But again, it's like, well, what a unique idea, man. I mean, think about this. Would you have, I don't think we've seen anything like this for five, you know, in the last five years at least. I mean, this is a really neat idea. And uh, people in the chat room are saying it seems oddly reminiscent of Bioshock. I'm sure all of that is intentional to tie in to uh, the video games and the immersive uh, experience that you get. It's a totally different thing. Also tonight at midnight, uh, and you probably missed it <laughs> if you're not watching live, uh, MTV2, MTVU, VH1, and VH1 Classic, all showing the full 30-minute version of Beastie Boys Fight for Your Right Revisited. The real Beastie Boys. Did you, uh, did you see the, t the teaser trailer for this already? No, I haven't. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. First of all, understand, these are the, you are definitely seeing, um, uh, that's Elijah Wood, that's, uh, 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 what's that his Mark name? Mark Wahlberg? Uh, Zach Perry. No. Uh, and, uh, oh, we are the real Beastie Boys. Jack Black. So uh, tell me the setup. What's the story behind this, this video? 
I, I just watch the teaser because it starts off where you have uh, one set of very famous comedians and actors playing a young Beastie Boys and another set of very famous, you know, you got Will Ferrell in there, Jack Black is in there, you've got uh, Elijah Wood playing young Ad, uh, Ed Rock, I think. You can't even make sense of until you've been to the future and spent time there. What are you guys talking about? Break it down, Ed Rock. We bring. Is a this a celebration of, an, of the anniversary? Uh, I, I think that's part of it. It's This is going to be a 30-minute short film starring all these guys uh, as the Beastie Boys from the past and from the future. Stand ready to be signed! So you see, you had a, you, you see cameos from Will Arnett show up in there. You've got um, Ted Danson in there. Uh, it is amazing. It is so like if if you have a fond nostalgia for eighth grade when you remember Beastie Boys, uh, License to Ill coming out, or, or or if you're just a fan of their more current stuff, what an interesting idea that they're essentially making a 30 minute movie about this comedy time traveling young Beastie Boys versus old Beastie Boys. I don't even know if the Beastie Boys are in the video. But I totally am going to check it out tonight. I remember uh, playing Fight for Your Right off of a 12-inch single on our 9.30 debut on WGEL's Rock Zone. And wow. me and Jeff Alexander, the, the DJ who was on that night, arguing over whether it was a rap song or not. Because he was like, that's a Led Zeppelin sample, and they're talking at the same time. I think it's rap. <laughs> Because this, this was before, this was the first release. This is before the album actually showed up at the radio that's station. Awesome. All right. Uh, like, well, that's you, something that the Beastie Boys have always been good at is crossing genres, uh, both with their music, but also video. And that's what's great about this project. I mean, is it a movie? Is it a short? Is it a, is it a comedy viral video? What is this thing? Uh, but regardless, it's really exciting, really different. Now it's time for feedback. Now it's time for feedback with Brian and Tom on Fredo, yeah. Our first piece of feedback, feedback. I think that's feedback. what we should call that's it. Where we actually take the cartoon character Brack yes. from Adult Swim and we give him a sandwich. It's a new thing. We let him, we let him, <laughs> we feed him uh, your emails. <laughs> Thomas Termite Holman writes in, says, Hey, guys, I decided to take your suggestion and watch a random Netflix suggestion. Unfortunately, I got distracted by the entire series of Arrested Development. On an unrelated note, the small independent movie theater I used to work at just started a special weekly event called Terrible Tuesdays, where they screen an especially bad movie and put a discount on beer. They've already showed Manos, The Hand of Fate, you might know it from MST3K, and The Room, which were so gloriously terrible. They were awesome. I was wondering what tops your list of the movies that are so badly done that they end up being enjoyable, regardless of whether you have a drink in your hand. Thanks. Love the show. I know for me, I used to say about the original Tron that it's one of the best movies to have on in the background because it was so visually engaging and one of the worst movies to give your full attention to. And I stand behind that. Uh, also, I, I think it's unfair, too, because I have a nostalgic attachment to the original Flash Gordon, the De Dino De Laurentiis oh, version. Oh, yeah, me too. Oh, I love that. So good. And it, so the good. Queen music is so over the top. I absolutely love that. Those are my picks. Yeah, there's, a, there's, God, there's so many to choose from. Uh, I, 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 don't know, I don't know that I can reach in and find one right off the top of my head. I mean, I want to say like something like Evil Dead, but that's so cliche. Uh, because, and it was meant to be that kind of movie. It was meant to be bad uh, like that. So I, I'm, you know what? I'm going to have to ponder on that. I bet something will come to me when you, cause the problem is he said Mono's hand of fate. And that makes me think of all the MST three K's I've seen like, uh, um, Mitchell and, <laughs> and, 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 and those are fantastically bad movies that are fun to watch because they're so bad, but made even better by MST three K. Yes. What about you, Jason? I, I completely agree. Uh, Actually, Flash Gordon is just one of those at the top of my list. But I have a hard time actually believing that anybody would think that Flash Gordon was a, a B bad you know movie. It, it was just so amazing, but I could see it uh, being awesome. Here. Almost hey, you, all of the sci-fi weekend movies I've ever watched are so bad. Uh, you know what? I know what it is. Uh, Ten point one, the earthquake movie, where the earthquake chases a train and actually follows it by turning. No way. That is awesome. Totally my favorite. 
That is awesome. We also got another email here. This is from uh, Danny Kent, who writes, saw this and thought of you guys on frame rate. Is this genius or just bizarre? You decide. What is it? And it is a photo of uh, a building yeah. for The Walking Dead that happens to be right next to the cooperative funeral care. Oh, oh, man. Yeah, that's just not. Uh, knowing your neighborhood, you know, you put in that by, you don't know where all those billboards are actually located. And it's the cooperative funeral care. Uh, that's because they're all working, both the living and the dead cooperating working as they together. take care of the funeral. Uh, Matt writes in from Vienna, Virginia. I joined Brian as someone who's willing to pay $30 for these 60 day release window movies. This past weekend, my wife and I saw two movies in the theaters for a total of 50 bucks. In both of them, there were people talking, texting, and just being rude in general. It was tough to find seats, and we had to get there pretty early to get them. The last five movies I've gone to, I swear I've ended up sitting right next to someone who's texting throughout the entire movie. I'd much rather sit at home with my 60 inch TV and watch a movie there. The price might be slightly higher than it should be for a two-month-old movie, but I understand why they priced it there. But for me, I'm already paying six bucks for the highest quality voodoo movies, which look like Blu-ray to me, but you have to wait a long time for those. Agreed. Uh, this one comes from Keith. I have to say that Frame Rate is quickly becoming one of my favorite podcasts. New episodes of Frame Rate jump the line to become the next podcast I watch. I wanted to write you about the collector mentality that's come up on many of your episodes. I have a bookcase full of DVDs and Blu-rays and another full of CDs. I guess you might consider me a media hoarder, although I'm sure there are people who have much bigger collections. If I enjoyed a movie, I will buy it while I try not to pay full price. There are movies and albums that I will buy when they are released. Now, my family is about to move, and I look at these shelves full of movies and albums and a shutter. I think about the fact that I could get 99% of these movies by Netflix in two days and wonder if I really need them. I think about all those CDs, and while I tell myself I should create lossless backup images and high-quality MP3 tracks with carefully chosen album art, um, yeah, I look at Amazon's new cloud drive and dream of having all my music accessible anywhere without that kind of hassle. My wife has a wall of shelves and books and is starting to say she wants a Kindle. Unfortunately, it would cost a fortune to rebuy her books and my music digitally. I am one conflicted media geek. Any advice for me? What do you say, Tom? Uh, well, all I can say is what I've done, which is just keep the stuff you have and start buying digital from there. Don't get rid of your books. Don't try to digitize your books. Uh, just get rid of the books you don't think you need anymore that you've already read and you'll never read again, you don't like to have. Uh, and as far as those CDs, break them down into albums. Just pull out the album art and the CD and put them into albums. They take up a lot less space than they do up on the shelves. And get rid of the ones that you don't care about. Here's a trick, and actually there's a lot of stuff that I keep around just for nostalgia's sake, and Bonnie had the best trick. She said, just take a picture of it. You'll look at the picture. You'll remember how much you like that item, and it'll be like it's there with you. And once I started doing that, I just take, like, I gave away my childhood bike that, of course, I had. Now, I'm not going to ride the bike. My daughter's not going to ride the bike, but it meant a lot to me. It was a special piece of equipment. So I snapped a picture of it, and I gave the bike to Goodwill, and, and I've never missed it. And when I go through my albums, my photo albums, I run across that picture of the bike, and I think how great it was and how it's probably being ridden by some kid right now. Get rid of all your crap. Who cares? All right, that's, a good, that's probably a good point. So are you ready to watch Just Go With It with Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler? <laughs> yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Disclaimers, disclaimers. Let's get this out. Is this, uh, is this, do you own this movie? No, no, this is this week's $30 movie from DirecTV. They're, they're launching the okay, service that, now. I, okay, then you're crazy to spend $30 to actually watch. Well, coming just, soon. Okay, let's, that's just what they're launching with. But coming soon, the Adjustment Bureau, Cedar Rapids, and Hall Pass. I, I would spend $30 for Cedar Rapids because I just barely missed it. I selected Paul at the Alamo Draft House instead of Cedar Rapids, and I really wanted to see them both. So that's one that it's like instead of going out with Bonnie, that's, that's close enough that I'll, I'll pay 30 bucks for that one. All right, there we go. Whew, big episode today, Brian. Well done. Jumbo size, man. Yeah. We have too much content. We Fun cut size. It out. This we, is, need to, we need to give you less, people. That's this, our problem. Is that's we're giving our, you too much content. I promise to you, from now on, not so less. much content and not hey, so enjoyable. Way, if you want to send us your thoughts, send them over to frameratesshow at gmail.com. We do read all of those emails. I'm able to respond to almost half of them, but uh, we are able to pick out the best ones and put them right here on the show. Make sure to keep those tiny. We like tiny yeah. letters. Well, we'll read them all, but the tiny ones might actually get read on the show. And yes. the long ones, we might not read every single word. <laughs> but certainly we've skimmed and we'll we've read, we'll read the, most of them. Yes, of course. Twit.tv slash FR is our website. 
Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Frame Rate. Woo!